key is, is to focus on the patients whose cancers are hormone positive but HER2 negative. Now that's the biggest group of patients. That's probably around 60 to 70% of patients fall into that group. So this is all applies to them. Now they're women who, when they go and see a medical oncologist, are almost certainly going to be recommended uh, hormonal therapies, uh, tamoxifens, aromatase inhibitors, etc. But the difficult question is, do they also need to undergo chemotherapy with all that chemotherapy brings? So that's very much the discussion the oncologist will have with them. Now, for a lot of women, it's quite clear that their cancers are really tiny, no lymph nodes, and that chemotherapy will add nothing. There's another group of patients who unfortunately have bigger cancers or lots of lymph nodes involved, and there the recommendation for chemotherapy is quite clear. But a very large group of patients fall in between where their cancers maybe are two centimetres, but there's no lymph nodes involved, it's hormone positive, and the question is, should they have chemotherapy as well? Now, that, that's a question that's been around for a very long time, and maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, the, the, the strategy was to give a lot of chemotherapy to a lot of those women, but we're really recognising that that's too much to too many women, and the benefits of chemotherapy while they're there don't apply to a lot of those women. So the search has been on for ways to sort of give less chemotherapy to less women. So tests have been developed and the Oncotype test is one of them to try and help in that selection process. So if you're a woman with hormone positive HER2 negative cancer that's lymph node negative, then the Oncotype test has been developed to try and help give further information to allow a choice chemotherapy or no chemotherapy. So the Taylor X study has looked at this question in what's called a prospective way. So they've randomised uh, around 10,000 women, oh, they, they collected 10,000 women, I should say, into this study. They all had an Oncotype test done. Now, if the score was 10 or less, low risk, no chemotherapy, only given anti-hormone therapies, and they have done spectacularly well. And we already knew that information. What was presented uh, here at ASCO was the results from the patients who had a higher score and they divided them into two groups with it from between the score of 11 and 25 and then a score of higher than 25. Now the women who were scored higher than 25 are considered at higher risk of getting their cancer back so they were given chemotherapy, all of them and there was no um, testing there. But the group that was discussed yesterday was the group who had a score between 11 and 25, and there was about 6,500 of them. And they were randomised to either chemotherapy or no chemotherapy in addition to their anti-hormone treatment. Exactly the question we have to decide every day with patients, chemotherapy or no chemotherapy. And what this showed, and this was the new information, what this showed was that in general, if you have a score under 25, you, you do not get any benefit from adding chemotherapy in. So that's, that's huge news, because there's a lot of women in that group, and therefore a lot of women will be spared unnecessary chemotherapy. And that was the headline result, but then they've looked into it deeper and looked at uh, age groups. And what they found was there was a difference in the results in terms of age. So if you were over 50 and you had a score between 11 and 25, chemotherapy added nothing. And that's a big group of patients. So that's really important news for them. And I think for Australian women, if, if you're in that group, if you're someone over 50, you've just had breast surgery, it's a hormone positive HER2 negative cancer that's lymph node negative and you're going to an oncologist to talk about treatment and he or she talks about chemotherapy, the question is should I also have an oncotype test if we're trying to decide whether or not to go down the chemotherapy path. Um, what they showed was, was that in the younger women, those 50 and under, it was a little bit more complex, but there may be a, still a role for chemotherapy if they scored particularly between 20 and 25. If they were under 15, they did extremely well with no chemotherapy, but certainly if they were between 20 and 25, there is the suggestion that chemotherapy may still have a role, and that really requires a really careful discussion between the oncologist and the patient about that information and how they want to apply it. 
So uh, uh, th- this is really new news. It's uh, information that we've been waiting for for years. This trial took about 10 to 15 years to come up with, do and collect the data. And I think it really opens up the door to being much more selective and careful with uh, chemotherapy use. So in the very top line message, who will benefit the most from this test and who will benefit the most? Obviously the women who didn't fit the trial, so women with uh, node positive cancer, women with HER2 positive cancer, triple negative breast cancer, so there's quite a few of the other groups where it's, this test is not helpful. It's not a test that you apply 6, 12, 18 months later, so if you've had breast cancer and you've already had your treatment or you're halfway through your chemotherapy, there's no point going backwards. It's really for patients who've just been diagnosed, just had their surgery and are making that decision about chemotherapy. We're in the era where we're trying to really individualise treatment for patients. So it's not one size fits all. It's not a recipe book. Everyone has to undergo exactly the same treatment. So this is these genomic tests are part of that that move into trying to very much individualise the treatment. The second thing we're really trying to do is what's called de-escalate treatments. We're trying to give less chemotherapy, less radiotherapy, less surgery. It's unnecessary. Try and really tailor the treatment for the patient and the, the cancer. And this, these tests can help that. So it's really, they can discuss it with any of their treatment team. Um, a lot of surgeons talk, talk about genomic testing uh, when patients first come for their results of their surgery. And certainly uh, medical oncologists uh, can talk about the appropriateness of it if they think it's going to help that particular woman. Um, and so, yeah, certainly open to discuss it and um, thinking about whether it applies to their situation. We conducted a trial in Australia now some seven years ago where we looked at the impact of this test in changing decisions and we showed that uh, there were quite a lot of women who had been recommended chemotherapy initially who moved away from being that recommendation uh, because of the test and that's been replicated all around the world. And the use of chemotherapy in countries like uh, the United States, where they use this test a lot, has dropped significantly since the test has come in. If you're an oncologist who tends not to use as much chemotherapy, or you have a patient who's really trying to push against chemotherapy quite reasonably, this test result can sometimes aid you in not, in, in, in yes, being more um, sort of specific about recommending chemotherapy because otherwise the patient may have been undertreated. So that's a, you know, it's not just about avoiding chemotherapy, I suppose it's really about giving the right patients chemotherapy. This test is not covered by um, Medicare or the private health insurance, so uh, patients do have to uh, self-fund it. Um, the cost is $4,500. Uh, it takes a couple of weeks for the results to come back from, from the test. So, I mean, that is a problem, and it, it's certainly been a, a problem we've faced now for a number of years. We're s- uh, still hopeful that it may get uh, funding approval through the, uh, the health system, which would obviously open the test up to, to more women. Um, it's also important to point out that there are other molecular tests or genomic tests that can be used to sort of look at the question of chemotherapy or not in, in early breast cancer. They're quite different tests, uh, done, done in a different way, and obviously the study that was presented at ASCO was about the oncotype test, not about the other tests. Thank you very much.